Lord, I thought everybody would be jumping up around and running around the church today. After two years away from being able to celebrate the Lord, I came across a picture on March 30th of 2020 was the last time that we were, well, that was the time that we were in here by ourselves. Pastor was standing here in front of an empty church house after having four to 600 people in here every morning. So look at what God is about to do as we enter back into the house of the Lord and we might be able to celebrate. There it is, let's lift them up, let's set the atmosphere. Let's get it prepared for when our pastor comes forward, the atmosphere is already set, amen? Amen, amen. Let us go into a word of prayer. If you're with a loved one, you can reach out and touch the hand. If not, we are still practicing our protocols. Hmm. Jesus, through many dangers, tolls, and snares, Lord God, you allowed us to get to this point that we might be able to enter back into your church house to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, because for truly, we all have something that we can be rejoiceful and glad for on this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for entering into this house, Lord that we might be able to hear what it is that you've placed in our pastor's heart to be able to share with us as we're in the middle of Lenten season, Lord God, and how we are approaching the cross on Sundays. And now we're going to approach the cross, Lord God, here on Monday, this miraculous Monday, Lord God, and how miraculous you've been, Lord God, to us all. We all, again, have something that we can be thankful for during this time. And so with that, Lord God, we just want to celebrate you and thank you, Lord God, for opening back up this church or house so we might be able to experience you in ways, Lord God, that we have grown accustomed to, Lord God. And as our elders share with us during our quarterly conference in this now normal time, not new normal, but now normal time that we find ourselves in, Lord God, we just want to say thank you as we make the adjustments and we get settled into those things, Lord God, that you have for us. One thing we can rest assured is that you have been consistent through these times, though. You have been with us. You have blessed us. You have kept us, Lord God. And yes, we all have been affected in some way, fashion, or form or another during this period. But through it all, Lord God, you've been a comforter. You've been a keeper. You've been a provider. You've been a protector, Lord God. We have been able to look to you for the help, Lord, that we need during this time. So with that, we're going to say thank you, Lord God, and celebrate you. We have special blessings right now on our pastors who never took their hands off the plow during this period of time. They continue to do your work, Lord God, not only here in this church house, Lord God, but over the World Wide Web, Lord God, we've been able to have a reach that has been in a way so impactful, Lord God, that we can't even describe, but you knew you knew. You knew at the very beginning what your purpose was in this, Lord God. And it's not for us to always understand all things, Lord God, but it is there for us to be able to celebrate it as it is revealed unto us. And we want to say thank you. So now, Lord God, as we get ready to enter into this service on this morning, Lord God, we ask that the way that we came in will be different than the way that we come out as we have come out before, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for entering in while it's dark, but we thank you, Lord God, for the light that shall shine when we leave this place on today, that we might be filled with your Holy Spirit, that we might go into spaces and places, and people may ask, what is it, Lord God? What is it about you that, that, that allows you to shine during this time? And we can share the goodness of you to them. And we won't sit on our praise, allow them to know, Lord God, that you have been good. You have been great. You have been marvelous. You have been fabulous. You have been a keeper. You have been a provider, Lord God. You have been a way maker, Lord God, where there has been sometimes apparently no way. So with that, we want to just say thank you and we want to celebrate you. So again, Lord God, this group is not going to sit on their praise. This group is going to clap their hands. This group is going to say thank you. And even those that are... Tuned in right now on the internet, Lord God, we ask right now that you just might be able to accept their praise in their homes, Lord God, in their cars, in their workspaces, wherever they are right now, Lord God, that they too might lift you up and magnify you and just say, thank you, Jesus, for what is yet to come on this morning. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let all the church house say amen, amen, and amen. Minister Kim. Good morning. This morning's scripture will be from uh, Matthew 14, verses 1 
through 12. And I'll be reading the New Living Translation. That's Matthew 14, verses 1 through 12. And it reads, When Herod Antipas, the ruler of Galilee, heard about Jesus, he said to his advisors, This must be John the Baptist raised from the dead. That is why he can do such miracles. For Herod had arrested and imprisoned John as a favor to his wife Herodias, the former wife of Herod's brother Philip. John had been telling Herod, it is against God's law for you to marry her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of a riot because, of all, the, because all the people believed John was a prophet. But at a birthday party for Herod, Herodias' daughter performed a dance that greatly pleased him. So he promised with a vow to give her anything she wanted. At her mother's urging, the girl said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a tray. Then the king regretted what he had said, but because of the vow he had made in front of his guests, he issued the necessary orders. So John was beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on a tray and given to the girl who took it to her mother. Later, John's disciples came for his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Can we give the Lord's name all the honor and the presence of the Lord and the God of the Lord? Thank you, Mr. Wonderful, for leading us in our prayer on today. We want to give the Lord's name the praise, the honor, the glory for our minister, uh, Robeson, giving our scripture. And we are just so blessed to see it's been two years since we've had a live every morning. And every season, so I just want to thank you so much for coming out. So blessed. It's always a blessing, but to wake up this morning and to call the church and to hear Brother Melvin Clay's voice, he want to say hallelujah and just a blessing. Uh, because of the pandemic, there has been, uh, we've had to make some significant adjustments. And with that, uh, we, our multimedia ministry is really on a skeleton crew. Can you put your hands together for Brother Roy Scott, who is the heads out <laughs> multimedia ministry, Brother Scott is. Uh, up on the sound booth and all those pro working on the sound booth and cameras. Uh, they have been working in a tremendous way all during the pandemic and now um, they have been doing phenomenal work uh, as these early morning services start. And we just want to say thank you to them as well as to the officers who are here. Sister Petty is here. Sister Queen Clay is here. We just give the Lord's name, the praise, the honor, the glory. Our stewardesses are here on today. We want to thank the Lord. Sister Bennett, the head of our uh, missionary society is here on today with your mask on. I apologize if I miss someone. But I also want to thank the Lord for the most anointed ministerial staff in the whole wide world. Thank Reverend Marriott on today. And we say thank you so, so much for coming. Pastor Joanne sends her love. She was all ready to come out, but I just said, sweetheart, please stay home because of, uh, as you know, she's doing much better, but her eye still gives her great discomfort. And so uh, I asked her to stay home so that she can at least be ready for woman season. Amen. And can all the women of God give the Lord's name to praise for God is getting ready to do great things during our woman's season. And we thank the Lord for all the things he's getting ready to do. And for our family watching on streaming, we thank you for tuning in, whether it's right now or later on during the day or even during the week. We want to thank you for tuning in as we just believe that God has miracles on this Monday morning. Amen. And especially for those who are in need of a healing uh, need of going through something. Our morning miracle times is a time by which we believe in God is going to intervene in supernatural ways. And so again, we're just so blessed to see so many persons who are here on today. Uh, I know uh, Minister Miller has prayed and we want to go back to God in a word of prayer. Turn to God our Father, we come today in the name of Jesus, thanking you for the work and ministry of, of Minister Miller. Thank you for Minister Robeson. Thank you for all the people who are gathered here on this day. Thank you for my wife, that's right now that your healing power will continue to be upon her and we thank you for the woman's season now I ask that you hide me behind your cross I ask that your Holy Spirit will have your way we're believing you as the choir sang on yesterday for signs wonders and miracles and we're believing that the people of God who are either in this sanctuary or who are listening today will feel your presence and your power but most of all they will feel your miracle working power in their lives in Jesus name we pray amen and amen I want to thank you so much for coming. One of the things we do want to share uh, as we go through this Lenten season, we have 12 early morning services that we have planned, and uh, we are going to be asking that Wednesday will be our fasting day. 
and however you want to do that. So if you want to fast for 24 hours on Wednesday, let's uh, say from, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 6 o'clock or 12 midnight uh, to 12 midnight uh, the next day, uh, the same day, that's fine. If you want to fast for 12 hours, we are just asking that whatever period of time, we realize that some persons are on medication, some persons for health, some persons may not be able to fully fast. You might be able to have to do a Daniel fast where you're eating something, but also uh, we're just asking you that Wednesday will be the day by which you set aside for some level of fasting if you're able to. If you're not able to fast on Wednesday, we ask that that will be a day of consecrated prayer. <clears throat> Uh, praying three times when you wake up in the morning, if you have time sometime in the day that you'll be able to pray and then uh, at night, but it, wouldn't, it won't be haphazard prayer. It will be a dedicated time. I'm going to wake up 20, 30 minutes earlier, hour earlier, so I can spend time in prayer. <clears throat> Those watching on stream, I'm going to dedicate some time during my work day. Uh, if you have a 20 minute time or if you decide to fast for at lunchtime, that that will be a time of prayer. And then before you go to bed, it's not a prayer at the end of your bed when you're tired, but I'm going to be uh, planning to pray. And let's assume you go to bed at 11. I'm going to plan to pray at 1030. I'm going to try and clear out my schedule. So again, it'll be dedicated time to pray. But not only that, it's going to be a dedicated time uh, for your health. Uh, we want this Lenten season not just to be giving up something during Lent and then when Lenten's all over, you go back <laughs> to the same eating habits uh, that you had before. We want this time to be a time dedicated for health. You may not be able to be a part of a health club, but at least you can start walking, someone should say amen. You can be doing simple things that allow you to begin to exercise in a way by which <clears throat> uh, you're able to begin to focus in on your health. Uh, one of the things the Bible said, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. And as your pastors, we want you to be in good health. We want you to be able to be physically fit to be able to do the things that God would have you to do. And because of that, we are focusing in on your physical health and during this time. And because of uh, being online, because of all the things online, you don't even have to go to a trainer now. Your trainer is on your phone. God bless you. Can you hear Reverend Milligan, who's done such a phenomenal job with our outreach at hand praise. Thank you, Reverend Milligan. <clears throat> uh, there are so many things online that you can just turn to or get information about. Um, and so again, we pray that uh, and that health will become a focus. And finally, the word of God. Um, Pastor Joanna had been hoping to do a series on Proverbs, and once she gets back uh, to be able to do Bible study, that's where we're focusing, she will be focusing on. But Proverbs is a book of wisdom, and it gives practical advice as to how it is that uh, God would have us to live. But also, uh, during this Lenten season, we'll be going through the a book of Matthew. And so uh, we started with Matthew, uh, the 14th chapter, and Matthew ends at the 26th chapter. And so, as you can see, that's 12. And so during these 12 days of the early morning services, if you want to follow along, each day we're going to be looking at a different chapter in Matthew. Today we're going to be focusing back on uh, chapter 14, but every day after that it'll be the 15th, 16th, and so we'll be going in order. So if you want to even read ahead and then be able to uh, be guided by what it is that God would have us to do. We want to give the Lord's name the praise. I was remiss in not thanking uh, Sister uh, Haynes Lee as well as Sister uh, Kim Cassell for being here. They were all expecting Pastor Joanne to be his high. Give the Lord's name the praise for the greatest ministries of help anywhere in the whole wide world. Minister Turner. I want to say thank you, Brother Evans. I want to say thank you. And uh, ushers are here early this morning as well. Thank you, ushers, for coming in. And we want to say thank you. So if you'd be so kind to turn uh, back to really chapter uh, number 11 of Matthew, and then we'll be moving to chapter number 14 of Matthew, chapter number 11 and chapter number 14. D.L., thank you. So thank you so much for coming in on, on today. D.L., uh, Many of you remember Jamal Spratley. Uh, during the two years of the pandemic, Jamal was the one that did all the creative things as we tried to do this uh, Lenten service um, uh, virtually. And DL has been a partner of Jamal. Jamal uh, went home to be with the Lord around this time last year. And uh, DL has come to be a ram in the bush. And we want to thank the Lord for all that he has brought to the ministry. Um, 
So today we want to be focusing in on John the Baptist. And we first meet John the Baptist uh, in chapter number three of Matthew. Oh, we'll actually, we have to go back really to Luke. We first meet John the Baptist through his mother and father, uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth. Uh, Zacharias was a priest in the temple. And uh, during this time, there were as many as 24,000 priests who were serving in the temple in Jerusalem. And uh, you can look at somebody from a distance and say, it's going to get better soon, amen. <laughs> I haven't been up this early in church in two years, but <laughs> I'm going to wake up and smell the Holy Ghost coffee today. <laughs> uh, and uh, there were about 24,000 priests. And so they were, so every one of the priests could not serve in the temple, especially during this time of the year, which would be Lent and from the Jewish people would be Passover. So by lot, certain priests were able to serve in the temple. Uh, and by that, one of the highest honors you could get would be to serve in the temple, but you would go behind uh, where the priests would go into the holies of holies. And we want to give the Lord's name, as I thought about it, so can you give Sister Petty a hand praise in, in Sunday school? We got word that Sunday school, we had folk watching from across the world in Sunday school. And we just want to say thank you, Sister Petty, and all the persons who have been doing such a phenomenal job in Sunday school. And I thought about that because we're kind of teaching, and that's what Sunday school does. And so they, they served in the temple. And uh, Zacharias had a chance to serve in what's called the Holies of Holies. He went behind uh, where the priests would go to a place where only, as far as the Jewish people could, where God was. And the priests who served behind the Holies of Holies, they were praying for two things, or one thing really. They were praying for the redemption of Israel, which meant they were praying that the Messiah would come. And it was very important for the Jewish people, especially a couple, that if you did not have a child, when the Messiah came, you would miss out on it because you would have no descendants, you would have no legacy to embrace the fact that the Messiah had come. So you'd be cut off or left out. So Zechariah was in the temple as a priest praying, praying for the people of Israel that the Messiah would come. But not only that, he was also praying for the fact that he and his wife Elizabeth would have a child. Because if the Messiah did come, they did not want to miss out on the fact that their legacy would be a part of what God was doing for the Jewish people. So Zechariah went into the temple, and there in the temple, while praying for the people of Israel, God told Zechariah that you were going to have a son. And so you can imagine, no one really knows, but let's assume uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth are in their late 60s, 70s. You can imagine how happy Zacharias was that he was going to have a son. Has God ever blessed you in ways that were exceedingly and abundantly? So here he is, like Abraham and Sarah. They, had, they were praying for it, but sometimes you're praying for something. And even though you believe in God for something, you really don't think it's going to happen. I mean, you've been praying and believing God for so long, you've almost given up on the fact it's going to happen. And part of what we're trying to do this morning in, in uh, uh, Miraculous Monday, whatever you're believing God for, I'm asking that you don't give up. That God, that God does not forget. God does not lose his power over time. And something that God has put in your spirit that you're believing God can do or will do, I want you to hold on to that faith that is still going to come to pass. So Zechariah went into the temple praying that he would have a son, and God delivered. God made it happen. And I'm just believing on this miraculous Monday, if you're here or even if you're watching on streaming, get ready. God's getting ready to do what you've given up on. And, and, and we're really going to be dealing with today, have given up on because of tragedy. You've given up on it because of the fact you've gone through something. And God didn't say it was over, but you said it's over. And so today, Zacharias has, but not only that, God tells Zacharias that your son is going to be the forerunner of the Messiah. 
So he's getting two and one. His son is going to be the forerunner of the Messiah. So his prayers for his people are answered and his prayers for his own personal life are answered. That's when we talk about God can do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you ever could think or imagine. <laughs> and so here it is. Uh, John, the, when he's born through Elizabeth, uh, the, everyone assumed he was going to be Zacharias Jr., but he was called John. John means grace. Anybody beside me this morning need grace? Okay. Grace. This is a concept that's purely Christian. No other religion has the concept of grace. Every other religion is like the Old Testament where you have to work out your salvation, where there are prescribed things you have to do, and the more you do the prescribed things you have to do, the more you are in tune with God. Christianity has what's called grace. Some, one of the more current things that you're hearing about is karma. If you do good, good things are going to happen to you. If you do bad, bad, not only bad things happen to you, it's going to happen to your generation. So why are all these things happening to me? Well, somebody in my background must have done something wrong. and I'm, I, You can hear it. I'm, I'm going through this karma. <laughs> it's gotten to the point where almost you think karma is Christian. Most religions, it's a case by which it's almost mathematical. If you do A, B is going to happen. If you do C, uh, D is going to happen. There, there is a human logical progression based on if you do this, God's going to do this. So the Muslims, Jews, if you go to Israel, they're, they're praying three times a day. The whole country stops. Some of you have been to New York City or a major city, try to get a cab. <laughs> Twelve, you ain't getting a cab. Uh, in Israel, everything shuts down. I mean, at three o'clock, it's amazing. You have Muslims and uh, Jews fighting each other, but at 12 noon, 9 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, <laughs> they're all praying because it shuts down. That, that is what they're required to do. But Christianity, it does not have a human logic to it. You can mess up and God will still bless you. We have grace. Anybody know about the grace of God? It's a, it's a purely Christian concept that God loves you so much that when you mess up, his grace is sufficient. And you can get back on your feet and get back up because God is a God, not of a second chance, but another chance. So John... Name means grace. He's born, and with this, Jesus and John know each other since birth. So John comes into the world knowing that he's going to be the forerunner of the Messiah, knowing that his life is going to be dedicated to bringing about a revelation of the fact that Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, as the Jewish people understanding, is getting ready to come. So when he's born, he knows what his purpose is. Uh, anyone follow football? Okay. Uh, most of us, even if you follow football, even if you have a favorite team, chances are you do not know who the offensive linemen are. Because they are the ones that in many instances do the hardest work but receive and seek the least amount of attention. A running back will complain, I don't get the ball enough. Uh, why receiver? Throw me the ball. Uh, quarterback, he's the center of attention. But you never hear a lineman say there ought to be more plays run my way. I'm upset. They never run the ball. No, they, they have a sense that they are doing this for the team and not necessarily for their own recognition. That's John the Baptist. John the Baptist was clear that his life was about being the forerunner of Jesus, of the Messiah. And Jesus knew that John, his cousin, that was his role as well. So in chapter number three, when we first see John doing his work, he's the baptizer. But you have to remember his understanding of his role is Old Testament. He doesn't have, he hasn't heard Jesus preach. He, 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 there, there's no New Testament. So his 
only understanding of his role is based on Genesis through Malachi. And so his understanding of who the Messiah is going to be is going to be the Messiah who's going to overthrow, in this case, the Roman government. And it'll be clear. How do you know you have the right quarterback? He wins the championship. When he wins the championship, there's no discussion. That's the right one. There's no discussion. You know the Messiah when the Roman government falls and Israel is brought back to his glory under King David. So there's no discussion about it. There's no New Testament understanding about it. So that's John's understanding of who the Messiah is going to be. So in chapter number three, John sees Jesus coming and says, this is the one. I'm so unworthy to be in his presence I'm like a slave. I should not even be able to untie his shoes. I baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Uh, miraculous Mondays is going to be a miraculous Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He is the one that's going to bring about what we've been praying about for 4,000 years. He is the one. And then the heavens open up and God tells his son, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So John has a satisfaction of knowing that while he was born, this is what's getting ready to happen. And he's had a chance to see it. Jo Jesus seeks out John because he knows that John is the forerunner like Elijah. Elijah said, every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, every rough place shall be made plain, every crooked place shall be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. He's talking about the fact that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, is on the way. In case you think I'm just teaching, I'm talking to you. Get ready, God's preparing a way for you. He didn't wake you up this morning <laughs> just to wake you up. God has something special for you. I said, God has something special for you. And it's been prepared for you since your life began. He has something, and John had a chance to see it. And so we moved to chapter number 11, and John's in prison. Here he is, he's dedicated his life for the Messiah, and he is planning, like he's anticipating that the Messiah is going to overthrow the Roman government. And here he is, the one who's the head of the Roman government in Galilee, Herod Antipas, has put him in prison. And as we shared on yesterday, Jesus hadn't even had a press conference. Jesus hadn't even called L. Shopton or Reverend Jacks or, or, or Benjamin Crone. hasn't called nobody. He, he, he's there, and again, his understanding is Old Testament. If this is the Messiah, and he's going to overthrow the Roman government, why can't he help me in this situation? If he is who he says he is, why am I going through what I'm going through? And that's a dilemma that all of us have had to face. No one has faced a challengeless life. Everyone has had to go through a period in your life when you're wondering, is God going to show up? And now we're talking about John the Baptist. I'm talking about a man that has dedicated his life in the wilderness. He's dedicated his life being a monk, so to speak, apart from society, preaching you have to give your life to God you have to turn from your sins, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he has been baptizing, symbolizing, moving from the old to the new. And regardless of who you are, you have to realize the fact that I'm a sinner needing God's salvation. Pharisees, you're a sinner. Come and get, uh, be saved. Not saved. Come and repent of your sins. Whoever you are in society, you are a sinner. And once you recognize that, that's when God can bless you. And, that's, and now he's in prison. And he's wondering, is Jesus the one? So he sends his disciples. And his disciples are asking, John's disciples, are the same question. Are you the one or should we look for another? And in, in chapter number 11, Jesus tells them, yeah, I'm the one. But I'm not the one that you have been 
looking for based on your understanding of who you think I am. I'm not the Old Testament Messiah. I'm the New Testament Messiah. The Old Testament Messiah, you will know who I am based on what I am doing. And it's based on a political revelation of the fact that your oppressors shall be defeated. But that's not who I am. I am who I am because I am the Son of God. It is not that I'm a prophet based on what I teach, even though that's part of it. It's, it's not just what I do, even though that's a part of it. It's who I am. In other words, my presence ushers in God's kingdom. And I don't ever want you to forget the importance of the presence of God. Sometimes you don't have answers, but you do have his presence. I said, sometimes you don't have answers and don't always think you have to have an answer. But if you have his presence, the promised land was not just what was in the land, it was who was in the land. It was God in the land. And I found out about the presence of God when my grandmother died. When my grandmother died, Reverend Adams, my pastor, came over to the house. Didn't say a word. If you've met Reverend Adams, he's just humble. He walked in, obviously greeted the family, sat. There were about five, six of us. Didn't say a word. We started talking about my grandmother, started reminiscing. He listened for maybe about 30, 45 minutes when he stayed. And then at the end, he just had a word of prayer and left. And we felt wonderful. <laughs> we felt because of his presence. If my pastor can have that kind of presence, you imagine what Jesus can do? When you're at the casket of a loved one, it's his presence. There's no answer. There's no answer as to why this happened. There might be persons who are whispering to you. There might be spiritual persons who try to act like they know what happened or why. But the reality is you need his presence. You need to know as you're standing here that he's standing there with you. He's walking with you. And he's going to walk you through this. His presence. And so John's disciples come to Jesus and they're asking, are you the one or should we look for another? And he tells them, tell John that the blind are seeing, the lame are walking, the lepers are being cleansed, the deaf are hearing, the dumb are speaking, and the dead are being raised from the dead, and, and the poor are being preached to. For John, it allows him to move from an Old Testament understanding to a New Testament understanding because God is giving John this revelation. But for John's disciples, and this is what I want to focus on today, John's disciples, they're still wondering if Jesus is the one because they have been connected to John all this. They haven't been connected to Jesus. They've been connected to John and John is now in prison. And in chapter number 14, not only is he in prison, he's beheaded. And so now their whole world is thrown upside down. Anybody remember April 4th, 1968? In case you forgot, that's the day Dr. King was killed. And for those of us who are living, a whole world was thrown upside down. Of all the days in my life, I remember that day where I was, when we got the news, and how devastated we felt. And the reality was, and we can be Christian about it if we want to, I hated all white people. <laughs> I hated all white people. And those who weren't living, you can laugh at me or say, well, that's not spiritual. The bottom line was they killed King, and those of you who lived in Washington, D.C., you tore up the city. <laughs> the only reason Boston didn't get torn up if you saw the movie James Brown, James Brown was putting on a concert in Boston. The mayor of Boston, Kevin White, broadcast the James Brown's concert on television, and all of us stayed home and would party with James Brown instead of burning Boston down. <laughs> we were mad. I ain't just talking about young folk. We were all mad because our king had been killed by those 
who were, who were, who were trying to fight against. And I'm trying to, that, this is how John's disciples felt. Gee, you haven't done a thing, Jesus. But the blessing is, as John was killed, they got his body, a headless body, they buried it, but what did they do? Uh, Minister Robeson said it. It's the last verse. It's, it's so, it's so, it's three words. It's easy to miss it, but that's the most important thing that they did. They, they took his body, headless body, they buried it, and then what did they do? They told Jesus. My sister, come on. They told Jesus. They told Jesus. They told Jesus. Take it to Jesus. Whatever you're going, take it to Jesus. They did, did they understand it? No. But what did they do? They, were John, they weren't Jesus' disciples. They had never followed Jesus. John was now dead, and what did they do? They took it to Jesus. They took it. My sister, whatever you're going through right now, this anointing upon you is for you to make sure you take it to Jesus. Please raise your hand. The reason why God brought you out early this morning is to get you straight out of what you're in. <laughs> He's giving, take you out of it. Please close your eyes. You've been through some dark times. These last two years have not been easy. When we talk about a wilderness, you know what we you know what a wilderness is like, and I don't even know your situation because I only see half of your face, so I don't really know who you are, even though I might know who you are. You've had to walk through some stuff. You've had to go through some stuff. And you've had to, some ways, you've had to do it, and you have had to do it privately. Not everybody knows what you have been through, but God has kept you. God has kept you. And God's saying, this is going to be your time, your season to come out. Somebody can give the Lord's name the praise. When tragedy strikes, it's very easy to get stuck. Mama dies. You've heard me, some of you here. Mama dies. I can't go on. I can't go on. This is where mama dies and this is where you are. I can't go on. I'm stuck here. In some ways you even go backwards. I can't, I can't go on. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm just stuck. But with Jesus, he will get you through so you can go too. With Jesus, you're never stuck where you are. A divorce, I don't know how, I'm stuck. It just blindsided me. I don't know how I'm gonna, how am I, how am I gonna make it? I'm stuck. Matter of fact, you could, but God is gonna take you through. Um, children, going through all kinds of situations. I don't know how I'm gonna make it, I'm stuck. But God can take you through. A lot of times backsliding is when you feel in the midst of the tragedy, you're stuck. And you backslide. And you wonder how God, but does anyone know that God has shown up just in the nick of time? And that's why I must tell Jesus, all of my problems, all of my sorrows, he is the one that's going to get you through. He's not going to give you the answers all the time but he's gonna give you his presence. The disciples of John, did they, what did they do? They did what? Went and told Jesus. And we don't have any indication of what Jesus did. It was just his presence. Do I have a witness in the house? That his presence got, to, got him through. And not only, can you give our sister a hand praise? Not my sister in the yellow. Be so kind to come down. I'm sorry, person in the yellow, please be so kind to come down. Oh, my goodness, I apologize. I'll come to you. 
I didn't realize you had the walker. Are you able to come out at all? Praise the Lord. My goodness. You know the next analogy I was going to give? With sickness gets you stuck. Uh, I'm going to take your walker just for a second. No? Okay. Oh, you're going to hit? I can take it? Okay. <laughs> I felt rejected. <laughs> I've been doing this for 35 years. This is the first time I, <laughs> I said, God, I'm in a new situation. <laughs> I love your teeth. I love your sweater. I love your sweater. And what does it say? If my people call by my name and humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear their prayers and heal the land. You believe today God's a healer? Your sweat shirt lightens up the room. And the reason why it's a little difficult for you is because you're on an incline. I never knew how hard, and you can hold on. I've never knew how hard an incline was until I broke my ankle. And that's when I realized it's hard work getting up this incline. Now, when my legs were good, I didn't even think about it. But when I broke my ankle and it was on crutches and had to get up this incline, whoo, I was sweating afterwards. What you've been going through has been an incline. And because no one else has gone through it like you've been going through it, no one else really knows what you've had to go through. But God's saying he's making your crooked places straight. Your rough place is smooth. And every valley is getting ready to be, every incline he's getting ready to make love. So I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. You came today knowing that God was getting ready to do something. In the name of Jesus, we stand on your word that by your stripes, this woman of God today is healed in the name of Jesus. And even though she's on this incline, we want to give your name the praise, the honor, the glory. She's turning over this infirmity to you. And because you are a God of infirmities, and just as you told John's disciples, the lame are walking. The lame are walking. The lame are walking in Jesus' name. The lame are walking in Jesus' name. And we give your name all the honor, the praise, and the glory for what you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name, we want to say thank you. My sister has been handling this for many years now, but we want to say thank you. She's now releasing it to you, releasing it to the power of the Holy Ghost. And we're believing right now. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet, we're believing today God is healing you in the name of Jesus. And we give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. My sister wants you to take my arm. We're getting off this incline. I'm going to be your walker. Okay. We're going to fall together if we fall. That's all right. Going downhill is a whole lot better than going uphill. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when I was anointing you, I was feeling that you've been in this situation for a while. And so every morning during this Lenten season, I'm going to ask that you take your walker, put it to the side, and just start, even if it's just one step, just take one step without that walker. Amen. And we're just going to continue to walk. And every step we take, we're just going to ask you to say Jesus. Okay? Can you say Jesus? Jesus. That's right. Whew. Anybody else had to say Jesus? Jesus. <laughs> you said it like, whoo, Jesus. It's been a while, right? Yeah. It's been a while since you've had to walk without the walker. And I'm your walker right now, but I'm really not. It's, it's Jesus. All right, we're going to make this turn going to make this pivot and this time that pivot is really a pivot and as you take every step even though you're not saying it out loud I'm just going to ask that you say Jesus okay 
That's right, every time. That's right. You can say Jesus. That's right. And we're going to walk down uh, Sister Thompson and Sister Bennett. I'm going to ask that you come up. Hallelujah. Sister Thompson, you're going to be goodness. Sister Bennett, you're going to be mercy. I'm going to ask that you take my sister's arm. Hallelujah. And turn her around. That's right. That's right. This, this, this is an exercise. <laughs> all right. And just walk to the podium. Just walk to the podium. All right. Okay. All right. And everyone start giving the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. Okay. Hallelujah. And that's what God is getting ready to do. Goodness and mercy is going to be walking with you. Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to take your hand. And I did that so that you know goodness and mercy is going to be walking with you. Now this is the hard part going up this hill again. Okay, we're going to get it in a second. Okay, I'm going to be your walker right now. Okay, okay. You feeling better about it? A little bit, praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord's name the praise, the honor, the glory? And I'm going to get you walking now, all right? Is that okay? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you. Can you give our sister a hand praise this morning? Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Part of what we were doing today, my sister, and I know it's hard, and that's why we were talking about it, it can stop you, is that you're going to wake up one day and your walker is not going to be as vital to you as it's been in the past. Amen? So part of it's going to be an attitudinal change. And then after the attitudinal change, it's going to be a physical change. Amen? And we're believing God with you. Can we give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Amen? Part of what God had to do with John's disciples was the fact he applauded them that, he, that they came to Jesus. Now, I shared with you, like many of you, I was mad at uh, white people because they killed, obviously they didn't kill, but Dr. King got shot. Jesus and John's disciples could have been very easily mad at Herod because he was the one that had killed their uh, prophet. But they didn't, they didn't, they didn't burn Rome down. They, they didn't burn Galilee down. They went to where? Jesus. As I got, when Dr. King died, I went to church, but I wasn't in the church, and the church was not in me. I was more of a Black Panther, Black Muslim, not that I was officially a part of the black man, but that was my, my peace was more political than spiritual. But has anyone gone through life and you found out you needed Jesus? You, you, needed, you needed his presence, you needed his power, and he would show up. Sister Clay and uh, Sister Jackson, come down please. Can we give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Uh, Kim and uh, Sister Hainsley, be so kind to come down as well. I'm going to ask that you lock arms with each other. Uh, I, I have no idea what God's going to do right now. Uh, Reverend Ridley, be so kind to come down. Sister Jackson, if you take the arm of Reverend Ridley, you can leave those, the two, and just take the arm of Reverend Ridley. I need one more person. My sister, uh, right there, please be so kind to come down. Yes, uh huh. No, no, no. Sister Jackson, Reverend Ridley, by yourselves. My sister, be so kind to come down, uh-huh. Thank you. I'm going to ask that you stand right in the middle of Reverend Ridley and Reverend Jackson. 
Yeah, that's right, <laughs> Reverend Jackson. I, that's right. Um, the three of you be so kind. Stand right in the middle of them. Yes, right. The three of you be so kind to come. That's right. Amen. I'm going to ask that all three of you raise your hands. I'm going to ask that you take each other by the hand. I've gotten reports that all three of you have been going. I know this naturally, that all three of you have been having some levels of health challenges. But today is your miraculous Monday. And the, the health challenges that you've been facing have not been de debilitating. They have not, been, they have not kept you from coming to church. They have not kept you in the house. But they, you still have gone through some challenges. And you need to know that God woke you up this morning, especially Sister Hainsley and Sister Cassell, not to be with Pastor Joanne because she's not here. God woke you up this morning because today is your healing day. You came for one reason, but God had something else planned. The disciples of John came for one reason, to tell Jesus, but God had something else planned. We don't even know the names of John's disciples, but we do know that God used those disciples, even in Acts through Paul, because John's disciples continued to do the baptism. That's why Paul had to say, have you been baptized by the Holy Spirit or have you only been baptized by John's baptism? They continued the work even though John the Baptist had died. God wants you to know this morning, God is continuing a work in you and is starting it by the fact that today, by his stripes, you're healed in Jesus' name. And so today, for all three, we give your name, the honor, the praise, and the glory for your healing in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask that, uh, I'm going to call Reverend Jackson, Reverend Jackson, and Reverend Ridley. Please raise your hands. Take my sister's hand in the middle. Amen. I want you to imagine the sister in the middle is Jesus. I thought some sisters would give, us, give the Lord's name the praise. <laughs> The sister in the middle is Jesus. 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 When your spouses died, Reverend Ridley and Reverend Jackson, you didn't stop. You didn't stop. I need three people back here real quick, please. Thank you. You didn't stop. And the reason you didn't stop is because of the sister in the middle, Jesus. He kept you. Not only did he kept you, he used you to be a keeper for others. And God used you, despite what you went through, to also be a blessing to others who are going through what you have been through. I had you come up, not only so that you know he's your keeper even today, but also to let others know that you are an example of how God can keep you keeping going even when life wants to knock you back. And so today, in the name of Jesus, my sister in the middle, God is blessing you as well in Jesus' name. And that all things are passing away and behold, you are becoming brand new in the name of Jesus. Can you give our sisters a hand praise today in Jesus' name. So John's disciples went and told Jesus. They told him because of the fact that they didn't know who else to go to. And after they told Jesus, Jesus went into the wilderness and started by himself wondering what all this means. And the reason why Jesus went into the wilderness is because from this tragedy was going to be a brand new beginning. It's amazing how God takes tragedies and brings new beginnings. Everybody who went through something during this pandemic, please raise your hand. For some of you, it's been, you went through a tragedy, but God's getting ready to give you a brand new beginning. I want you to feel Jesus. Sometimes we think him as Jesus doesn't feel nothing. But does anyone know he cried when Lazarus? Everybody knows that scripture, Jesus wept. He cried. He feels. He's not a Greek God who's up in heaven, doesn't feel anything. He feels your pain. He feels your pain because he's felt pain himself. And I'm not just talking about on the cross. 
When John died, that's his cousin. And when John died, it was a symbol for him that something new was getting ready to happen. But even Jesus had to go to a wilderness place, a place and get away from everybody so he could contemplate with his father what all this meant. And when he came back, he was wiser, stronger, and better. Why? Because his father gave him everything he needed to overcome the tragedy of the death of John the Baptist. And sometimes we spiritualize Jesus so much that he just automatically got up and went through it. No! He did not automatically get up and went through it. He got up and went through it because he went to his father and his father gave him strength to run on to see what the end is going to be. And right after that, in chapter number 14, Jesus went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, healing everybody. <laughs> he did more in chapter 14. If you look at the end of chapter 14, everybody who came to Jesus was healed. Woo! He came out of this with more power than when he went in. Somebody after this pandemic, you're going to come out with more power than when you went in. <laughs> You've been through a lot. My brother, uh, Bison brother and Hampton sister, please come on up. Can't we all get up? <laughs> I didn't even know that was Reverend Weir. Good gracious. Hampton, please come on up. <laughs> Can you give Reverend Weir a hand pray? <laughs> Who make believe that we're <laughs> Woo! Can you give Reverend Vernon Ware a hand praise? So blessed. I saw him on, we had the, the annual conference this year is virtual. And so Reverend Ware was, remember Reverend Ware did such creative things with the young adult ministry taping wise? He now oversees the taping of the, of the Washington conference. It's amazing what God, that he has no, back, no background in it at all. God just blessed him. <laughs> and now he was overseeing the Washington Conference taping. So when we went to tape for the Washington Conference, Reverend Ware was um, the uh, Spike Lee. <laughs> he was a John Singleton. <laughs> he was a Gordon Parks. He was the one that directed all of us in what it is that we t to do. But I called you because I saw Hampton and I saw, uh, Ham I mean, saw Howard and saw Hampton. Um, can, can you take each other by the hand? I know we're social. And can you raise your hands up? Can't we all just get along? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Who's the real H.U.? <laughs> Everywhere, I still got jokes. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? I said, who's the real H.U.? And Reverend Ware said, you know. <laughs> raise your hands, my sister. Oh, raise your other hand, I'm sorry. Um, Reverend Ware is now pastoring Pilgrim Amy Church in Washington, D.C. Uh, Pilgrim Amy Church is going through, uh, they're right in the middle of the transition, the gerrymandering of that community. At the time I started ministry, Reverend Bryant said if he, wasn't, if, he was, if he could go to a church in the Washington Conference, he would go to Pilgrim because it was in the heart of the black community. Right now, all of that has changed. So Reverend Ware is having to pastor in a situation in which the community is changing. Uh, we are now living in a time in which what and how we're living is changing. So Reverend Ware, as a pastor, in many ways is representing what all of us are dealing with, and that's change. Okay. My sister, I probably know you, but I just can't, I don't know you now because of the mask. But you are also going through significant change. Significant change. I'm not, all of us are going, but you're going through significant change. That's why God brought you up with Reverend Ware, because both of you are going through some very challenging times, but God's going to see you through. I'm going to ask that everybody please stand. These two represent the fact that God's going to bring together what oftentimes has been tried to be torn apart. I am blessed that I have Hampton in me and Howard in me. When I'm at Hampton, in Hampton, Virginia, Hampton is the real HU. When I'm in Washington, D.C., Howard is the real HU. 
can we all just get along? <laughs> the reality is that both of them are phenomenal schools. And the blessing is that all of them developed during a time of great change for us as a people. And today, both of the schools are the premier schools of black colleges. And because of that, God has worked all things together for their good. Reverend, where God is working things out for you in ways that you can't even think or imagine. My sister, where you are is no accident and God is working it out for your good. For everyone who's standing this morning, God is working it out for your good. And God woke each and every one of you up on this Monday morning, those who are watching on streaming, to let you know that after Jesus went into a quiet place and began to contemplate what has just happened, he did not step back from what God had called him to do because John died. He did not get stuck because of how John died, but he said, I'm going to take what I've had to deal with and I'm going to go forward even greater than I would have gone forward if this had not happened. In other words, he took a setback and turned it into a comeback. Reverend, where God is getting ready to bless you. My God, it's been a blessing as your father in ministry to see you gray. And I'm not speaking about it from a visual, I'm talking about from a wisdom standpoint. To see you direct that was a blessing because it showed a maturity in an area that you didn't even have expertise in. But God is getting ready to mature you in ways that you never could think or imagine in every aspect of your life. Amen. It'll be all right to let go right now. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and we can't imagine what God is getting ready to do. My sister, your wilderness days are over. God is getting ready to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you ever could think or imagine. Can you give the Lord's name the praise? My sister in the very back here, my sister in the very back, right here, be so kind to come down. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, right, yes, right there. Can you give the Lord's name the praise, the honor, the glory? As I was pointing to you, God showed me this string hanging from my uh, dashiki. Can you please raise your hand? You literally have been hanging on by a thread. How you got here today is a miracle because you almost didn't come, wouldn't come, but God brought you here and once you got here, you knew God had a miracle with your name on it. I have no idea what you're going through, but I do know that you've been hanging on a thread. But God wants you to know you now have a rope, but not only you have a rope, God is pulling you out of whatever you're in and giving you the power to know that you can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth you. Can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory today? My goodness. This is just red time. Red, 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 red. Everybody in red. Please come down. My sister with the red mask. Oh, you've already come down. Okay. Can we give the red sisters a hand praise? I know it's pink, but it's all right to come down now. My goodness. Can we give the red sisters a hand praise? Each one of them are a miracle. Each one of them are a miracle. Each, good God about it. Take each other by the hand. I need one more brother, one more person to stand behind them. Please raise your hands up. Each one of you are a miracle. My God, each one of you are a miracle. Whew. Please close your eyes. Each one of you are a miracle. My brother, turn up. Each one of you are a miracle. Each one of you are a miracle. I said each one of you are a miracle. 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 And for my sister, the miracle you've been waiting for is on the way. In the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you think I'm saying hallelujah, but I'm just waiting for God to show me who else has their miracle. My sister with the pink on, be so kind to come up. Yes, my sister with the pink on, be so kind to come up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come right this way. <laughs> Forgot what you wore today. <laughs> Please raise your hand. Mm. What you've had to go, it's been diluted in the sense that you're not as strong as you want to be. You're not as strong as you used to be. Uh, even your faith has had uh, some level of diminished, but you were determined to get back to where you were. You weren't going to lie in bed this morning. You said, I'm getting up because I'm getting up. That's it. I'm getting up because I'm getting up. I'm getting up because I'm getting up. I'm getting up because I'm getting up. I'm not going to stay down like a boxer who's been knocked down. I'm not staying down. I'm getting up because I'm getting up because the fight still has to be fought and it has not gotten to the 12th round yet. Yes, I'm behind, but I believe these next three rounds, God is going to give me everything I need to win this battle in the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory for my sister? My sister right here, please be so kind to come. Yes, uh-huh. Please raise your hand. God, you ain't going to call me. <laughs> Come a little bit closer. God, you ain't going to call me. That's, I, I don't even see your... So, God, you ain't going to call me. I wasted my time coming. You ain't going to call me. You ain't going to... He knows your name. He knows the very hairs on your blonde head. He knows your name. And for me, what God is saying, the Son of God is resting upon you right now. It's not coloring. It's the Son of God resting upon you. His presence is upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Can you give the Lord's name the praise for our sister this morning in Jesus' name? Wow, my goodness. Red and red, please come up. Red and red, please come up. We're going to end with this. Can we give the Lord's name, the praise, the honor, and the glory? Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that both of you take each other by the hand. Please raise your hands in Jesus' name. I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows. He is the one. <laughs> I was talking to Minister Ernest Pugh. And we were laughing that sometimes he forgets the words of the song. <laughs> and that's what just happened to me. Anyone know that song, the words of that song? I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows. Anyone know the words? You don't have to sing it, just say it. <laughs> I'm the only Baptist in the house. <laughs> Nobody knows that song. I must tell Jesus all. Nobody knows the words. <laughs> I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows. I must tell Jesus, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows. Jesus alone will understand why I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows I must tell Jesus Jesus alone I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows Jesus alone will understand why. I must tell Jesus. I 
sing to yourself. Hold on my side. Anybody in the shower, you have to sing to yourself. I must tell Jesus. Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus. All of my sorrow. He will. I must tell Jesus. Jesus alone. In the name of Jesus. I must tell Jesus. All of my sorrows. Can we stand on the church? I must tell who? Must tell who? What's his name? What's his name? The lily of the valley, what's his name? The bright and morning star, what's his name? The bishop of my soul, what's his name? There's something about the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Every tongue has to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you're here today for no other reason but the name of Jesus, can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Hallelujah. 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 Minister Miller said in his prayer, you came in in the dark, but can you look through the windows? You're going back in the light. <laughs> he is the light of the world. Somebody ought to say amen, amen, and amen. Sometimes you just have to encourage yourself. You won't have anybody there. You just have to encourage yourself. Like Sister Thompson, you just have to sing it out until God works it out. He won't have an answer for you, but he will have his presence. And the more you sing, the more you'll feel him sing. The more you sing, the more you'll feel his presence with you. Do I have a witness in the house? Hallelujah. I want to say thank you for coming out this morning. I know for many of you it was a sacrifice, but I give the Lord's name the praise for you coming out and being blessed in Jesus' name. Can you stretch your hands unto the Lord on today? Eternal God, our Father, we come today in the name of Jesus, thanking you for the men and women who've come, and we can say thank you. Now, there may be someone that does know, not know about this man named Jesus. I'm assuming virtually everybody here knows him. But there may be someone watching on streaming today that does not. We're praying that what you've seen, the men and women of God putting their faith in, they're putting their faith in the person of Jesus Christ. And he is the one that can make a way out of no way. When the doors seem closed, he can open. And when you need those doors uh, closed, he will close them. He is the one that can guide you from where you are to where you need to go. You are like John's disciples. You have no one else to go to but Jesus. And I guarantee you, he will guide you, direct you, save you, bless you. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus the Christ is the Son of God. Everyone here who's in this sanctuary, can you give the Lord's name the praise if you know Jesus? We're believing someone watching today needs Jesus. If it's that you, please go to Ebenezer's website, tap on, I want to be saved, I want to join the church, I want to rededicate my faith, a minister of the gospel will get back and praying with you. And we, Pastor Joe and I, will rejoice in the fact that either you're saved joining his church or you're rededicating your faith. We give the Lord's name the praise in advance. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Thank you so much. Everyone here saved, please raise your hand. Everyone here saved. Praise the Lord. Please look at your neighbor. Make sure. Praise the Lord. God bless you today. God bless you. It'd be a mighty strong, unsaved folk to a personal one coming at 6 o'clock in the morning. We want to. Can you give yourselves a hand praise for knowing Jesus? We will be taking an offering today. I know many. How many give technologically now? Praise the Lord. Wow, that's wonderful, wonderful. We're going to be asking if you are going to give uh, through your technological device. Uh, you can either do it now or you can do it at another time. Those who are watching at home, we pray that you can give through GiveLify, Tidely. You can give through text to give You can go on Ebenezer's website, give through PayPal on the credit card, or you can mail an offering in. We're praying that as you give, God will bless you in your giving. Those who are here today, I'm just going to ask that you uh, take your technological device or whatever. You may not even have it right now. I'm just going to ask that your phone really becomes your envelope uh, and your phone really becomes your dollar bill or $10 bill or $20 bill or $50 bill or $100 bill. Whatever uh, you're giving, even if you're unable to physically get to it, it'll be all right just to raise a hand in some symbolism of that 
that you're getting ready to give. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for technology. We thank you for the men and women of God who are both here and watching on streaming that are getting ready to give for your work and to your ministry. We ask right now that you bless each and every person today in Jesus' name. And we thank you that as they give, you are blessing them beyond measure. And we give your name, the honor, the praise, and the glory for how good you are and how worthy you are to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask if you can, we'll just come, just put your, uh, if you're having a technological device, it'll be fine just to hit the altar, amen. Or if you're actually going to give on today, I'm going to ask that you put it in the offering basket. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for you on today. We give the Lord's name the praise, amen. I'm just going to ask that everyone just touch the altar. If, if you're not giving physical money, if you're just giving symbolically through your um, technological device, Say, say thank you as you touch it. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're saying something. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My goodness, look at all these folk covered by the blood today. God, 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 God bless you. God bless you today. God bless you. 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 We realize that many persons might have to leave, so if you have to leave, that's fine. Before we say the benediction, we understand. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, thank you for the offerings and tithes that have been given today. Anoint them and consecrate them to your honor, to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you give brother and sister Clay a hand? Praise. Amen. Thank you so much for coming today. I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. One of the ushers, one of the ushers have an offering. Thank you. Thank you. Can we give our ushers a hand praise? Thank you again. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, thank you for the time that we've had a chance to spend with you. May your anointing flow from this church unto your people. And we give your name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. Anoint each and every person gathered here today and watching on streaming. Bless them beyond measure. And we want to say thank you. The miracles they've been waiting for is on the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We love you today. Thank you so much for coming out. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Someone says, see you tomorrow on Triumphant Tuesday. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for assisting. God bless you, Hampton. <laughs> I got to watch myself now. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, 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 my goodness, I remember now. now I am Let, <laughs> praise God bless you. How you doing? Doing well.